When will Yellowstone supervolcano erupt? Volcano hit by 87 earthquakes in just one month. Sean Martin, Express UK reports Yellowstone National Park. As we know, the world's biggest volcanic caldera has been rocked by almost 90 earthquakes in the past month. And there are those who believe that it could be a sign that the huge supervolcano could be about to erupt. This is based in Wyoming, close to the Montana and uh, Idaho borders to the west and north. It's seen 87 tremors in the last 28 days. These are the ones that are reported. There's a lot more that are recorded. So 87 in the last 28 days, and this means that there could be an indication of an imminent eruption at the feared supervolcano. For many years, scientists were baffled that despite subterranean volcanic activity, there did not seem to be a volcano at Yellowstone until it was discovered the entire park was built on a live volcano uh, caldera. The biggest of the recent earthquakes was a 2.5 magnitude on the Richter scale, striking May 7th, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. Well, remember that in the beginning of April, we all remember, and we were shocked, astonished, at the 5 magnitude that was downgraded to a 4.4. That was um, northwest of West Thumb Lake. It was just past the border of Wyoming. It was in uh, Montana. And we all expected that the USGS would definitely come back and uh, inform us concerning that earthquake in the Yellowstone called There Are Chronicles that come out every week. Well, they didn't make a mention of it at, at all whatsoever. 35 years prior to that, to that they had a magnitude 4.3, and they were all uh, flabbergasted and uh, nervous about that being so big. I remember now in 1953, there was a 7.5 magnitude and they state that Yellowstone is still rumbling because of that very major earthquake back from 1953. So 28 days, 87 tremors, without the mention of the 4.4, downgraded from, from 5 magnitude anyway. The majority of the other earthquakes have been of similar strength but the experts claim that sometimes it's not about strength, but about the number of earthquakes that you have, the quantity of earthquakes. Portland State University geology professor Emeritus Scott Burns said a spat of small tremors around the volcano usually signifies that the magma and the gases beneath the surface are beginning to navigate their exit. So these are very specific words. Navigating exits, magma, and gas. Well, the gas comes out, but what about the magma? Now, if you get swarms under a working volcano, the working hypothesis is that magma is moving up underneath there, he said. But others disagree with him about whether an earthquake swarm near a volcano could be a sign of things to come. Jamie Farrell, she's at the University of Utah in Salt Lake City, believes that this is just part of the natural cycle for Yellowstone volcano, saying earthquake swarms are very, fairly common in Yellowstone. There's no indication that this swarm is related to magma moving through the shallow crust, end quote. If this supervolcano were to erupt, an estimated 87,000 people would be losing their lives immediately, two-thirds of the U.S. would immediately be made uninhabitable. Well, we're talking about supervolcanic eruptions here. Uh, there was another major eruption that happened in uh, 70,000 years ago, and there were 80 eruptions since then. And um, Jake Lowenstein of USGS also tells us that we're a thousand years overdue because they erupt just about every 6,000 years. Now, we're not talking about super eruptions, we're talking about eruptions. Now, the large spew of ash into the atmosphere from a super eruption would also block out the sunlight and directly affecting life beneath it, creating a 
volcanic winter, as we call it, nuclear winter, the massive eruption could be a staggering 6,000 times as powerful as the one from Washington's Mount St. Helens volcano that erupted in 1980 and deposited ash in 11 different states and also half of Canada, the five Canadian provinces. If the volcano explodes, a climate shift would ensue as the volcano would spew massive amounts of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, which can form a sulfur aerosol that reflects and absorbs sunlight. Looking at the recent earthquakes around Yellowstone, we had one today, 2.88 magnitude at a depth of minus 2.6. How is that possible? Unless it's in a mountain anyway. Uh, that was uh, on the from north from going from north to south, passing through the Yellowstone volcano. That's in northern Montana. Uh, that's on the fault line, as we know, that goes all around, all the way down south, passing through the Yellowstone volcano. That was a 2.88, almost three. Then we had one in Lincoln, Montana, where we always we've had a tremendous earthquake swarm the past couple of months. That's just around where the uh, five Richter downgraded to 4.4 was. This was a 1.47 at a 10 kilometer depth. Then we had another one close to uh, Butte, Montana, depth minus two kilometers, 1.79 magnitude, just off uh, Yellowstone. Another one of uh, 1.06 magnitude. And then we had one just south of the lake, Victor, Idaho, 1.58, and a bigger one of uh, 2.94 magnitude, Soda Springs, Idaho, just south of the supervolcano. So you can see that it's really rumbling, and they're not that small. We're talking about almost a three earthquake, and the other one in the south uh, and the north was uh, almost three earthquake, earthquake again, which are not at all small. And looking at the map of USGS uh, over the uh, Caldera area, we see that most of the earthquakes and the swarms are northwest of West Thumb Lake and basically around the new hotspot, the new thermal area that has been discovered that they will be going to examine now that they started going out on their field trips. They started their field trips as of May 1st. They still have four feet of snow up there, so it's very difficult to get to these areas to put in their monitors, their thermal and seismic and GPS monitors. So this this area with the new thermal area has been found has most of the earthquake swarms and also even in the lake itself, which is pretty dangerous because the lake is sitting right on top of the magma chamber roof. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.